So I will go back to our course style on 1.3.1, which is the lesson on work, mechanical energy, and heat. So in high school, I'm sure you have already encountered the terms work, energy, and heat. And these topics or terms were encountered in physics, even in junior high school, and even there's a reiteration, a review done also in uh, senior high. So for today, we're going back to this again, but this time the focus is more on our uh, field of application, which is engineering. Now, in high school, it's more of generic application only. Now, let me enlarge my screen so it will appear bigger in your side. Okay, too, too big. Okay, so now, so when we speak of energy, so it's a word that is defined as the capacity to do work or to transfer heat. So without energy, there isn't any capacity for any object, material, or body to do work or transfer energy in the form of heat. Or in this case, now it's specified here as transferring transfer of heat. For us to understand the concept of energy better, so we must first define work and heat. So since it's associated with energy, we will know first or review first on what is work and what is heat. So work is the energy used to cause an object to move against an application of a force. So movements of objects are normally related to work done on them. And if work is done on an object, we say that the object is being displaced. So that tells you that work is that thing that propels the object to be displaced from its original position. Now, when we speak of heat, on the other hand, it is the energy used to cause the temperature of an object to increase. Now, if you're going to distinguish work and heat from one another, work causes the displacement of an object, or we expect there's going to be a change in the position of the object, whereas heat uh, tells you that it's going to be an increase in the temperature of the object. It's actually increased if heat is being transferred to the object. If it is actually decreased, it's heat being removed from the object or from the material. So it could be either way, either an increase in the energy or a decrease in the energy telling you or an increase or a decrease in the temperature telling you that he's had Heat rather, heat rather has been transferred. So it's so easy to distinguish the two. Work is associated with displacement. Heat is associated with change in temperature. So the two main forms of energy are heat, energy, and transit because it's not always contained. So unlike uh, other forms of energy that can be stored in a particular material, Heat as a form of energy is always in transit in our language, naga silo silo, naga transfer transfer. Now, mechanical energy, chemical energy, electromagnetic energy, and nuclear energy are other forms of energy as well, or other forms in which heat as energy is being transformed into. Okay, now. We go to work first because energy here was explained or defined in association to work and heat. So we'll go first to work. So it, saw, it says there, there is a displacement and there is an application of force. So this work is a scalar quantity. So scalar meaning it's not important that you're going to set or give or shall I say specify the direction. A scalar quantity that is defined and measured by the product of the net force exerted and the distance to which that force moves. Or shall I say the distance is the displacement or the displacement in which the object was moved due to the application of the force. So to calculate, you have this. So work is equal to the force times the displacement times cosine theta. Now, weight miss, that's not the thing that we have seen in high school. Why will you place a cosine theta there based on the figure that you are seeing? 
So I will ask that or address that question in class now because we know in high school that work in the fundamental definition is simply force times the displacement. Now, why in this sense here in the figure that accompanies the equation that is provided to you or the formula, you have already the cosine theta. Why do you think do you have the cosine theta here? Anyone in the class who can explain or knows the answer, you may raise your hand. I can still see it here. Or you may comment right away. Why do you think you have the cosine theta? Why not a simple formula of force times distance? Because that's just how you knew it in high school. Why do you think? Mm -hmm. Anybody? You can, I can read your answer in the chat box if you don't have your microphones on. I'd just like to be assured that my CHC students really know what is the application of the principle of work when force is not the same in direction as the displacement. So I'm already giving you an idea. So why do you think you have the cosine theta here? Sa angle, may isang wake okay. up la misma gano'n may isang. Wait, ha? So I will see. So that was Drews. Again, Drews, what about the angle? Ang purpose ng angle, may isang kung ano ba may isang kung din ka, kung din ka ga, ang imo nga, Ma, ang wave na sang imo mes nga pag ano sang work bala misaw example bala sa pagtulod ni sang isabi ka object mm -hmm. sa different kind of angles kay gaapekto man sa mga work ka different uh, ano sang sang isa ka obra mo mes sang energy okay so in this case so i'll go back to my illustration thank you for that Bruce uh I go back to the illustration. What can you say about the direction of the force that is being applied by this person on the block? Is it the same, the original direction of the force? Is it the same as to the direction of the displacement? The way is it written? Is the force the same in orientation or direction as it is written as the displacement of the block? Yes or no? As it is written, is the direction of the force the same as that of the block? So there is an, a no. There is a specific angle on how the person pushes the block. And there's one here that says, there's a need for us to have the cosine theta because it's against friction. Naga create angle. Okay. So I will annotate here and let you know why there should be a cosine theta here. And I hope I'll make this clear because this should have been understood in high school. So this is the reason why. Your force as somebody plays on the chat box is not purely in the same direction as the displacement here. When we define work as the force times the displacement, the orientation of the displacement, if it's in this direction, the force has also be or needs to be in that same direction as well. So if this is your displacement, the force should always be in the same direction as that, or shall I say orientation, because in, the, in terms of direction, they are, always, they are both pointing to the right but in terms of orientation we say that they are now parallel or they are in the same direction if we go back to our orientation the force as originally applied by this man is not in the same direction as the displacement or orientation there is a need for you to get the component the horizontal component of this force because that component if i may say and if you can recall in your physics, then is actually the f of x component 
Well, that's the horizontal component of the force. And that horizontal component is the one that we are interested in, not the original direction of the force. So since we're after the horizontal component, if you will make a triangle here, I will isolate the triangle. And that's your triangle. And this is your original force. And this is the theta. If this is the f of x, if I will make a triangle here, this is your f of y, the vertical component. And if you're going to use your trigonometric uh, principle then using this triangle the f of x which you are interested in specifically in terms of the way the force is applied here this is the f of x is actually f cosine theta using this triangle it's f cosine theta because f of x is adjacent to this hypotenuse of the triangle of the triangle which is represented by cos f so that's the main reason behind you have the f cosine theta in lieu or in place of the original simple f formula for the work that you have learned probably in high school so work is equal to the force times the distance but in this case the force is horizontal it should be horizontal the original force is not so you need to get the appropriate component of the original force and place it here and that horizontal component the f of x as i have written here is f cosine theta so we multiply it by the displacement that gives us the work applied by this person to move the block in the direction towards the right or the work applied by this person to displace this block, the units from its original position. Do you get it? I hope you already got it because it's fundamental in physics, in high school physics. Okay, now, the common unit for work is the joule. But if you're going to break down what the joule is equivalent to in terms of the base units, it's equivalent to the product of the newton and the meter. Newton for force and meter for distance. Now, if you're, if you're going to break down the newton, the newton in high school in terms of uh, base units is equal to what? When do we get the newton unit? or the force unit which is newton what is it or where is it due from nga, uh, force. Nga, uh, ang force is equal to newton it's equal to the what actually the what why do you have it now broken down into this kilogram meter per meter second squared why do you think is this the base units. Gravity. Hmm? Your force is Newton, and Newton is mass times the gravitational constant, right? Or it's the weight of the object. What is the unit of mass? It's kilograms. What's the unit of the gravitational constant? It's meter per second squared. Right? So kilogram meter per second squared is the unit for the Newton, the base units, the fundamental units for the Newton. Plus the unit for that displacement, which is meter, gives you this. So kilogram meter per second squared. So it should be kilogram meter per second squared. That would be your. Uh, this should be class times kilogram meter per second squared this should be times not slash okay your kilogram meter per second squared the per should be here your kilogram meter per second squared times the meter will give you the unit of work which is joule now it can also be expressed to some uncommon units but as CHE to someday maging CHE kamo you will encounter these units as well uh, energy or work can also be having the unit calories or 
June. But the most common when we speak of work as in the view of physics, like the capacity to do work or displace an object, it's always in the unit of Joule, which is the Newton meter. In this case, this is just force, which is Newton. But if it's already Newton meter, as written here, that should be already work. Okay, the one that I place here, the W that I have placed here is not work by the way, class. This is weight. So I will place it. Basi ma confuse kamo because in high school we also represent the weight as W. So the force here is having the unit Newton, which is equivalent to the weight of the object. Now before I move downwards, any questions so far? Any question? Okay, there's one here on the chat box. Chat box. Okay, so remember that you need to you need to get the correct component of your force, which is the same in direction as the displacement. So you have to review what you have learned in trigonometry, how to uh, get the appropriate component of something, in this case, force, okay? Using the angle that is given. Now I will clear everything here and we go down. We proceed downwards. Now work is positive if the direction of F is in the same direction as the displacement. So if the force is in the same direction as the displacement, just like the one that is shown here in the figure, then it would be positive. Work is negative if the direction of the force is in opposite or is opposite that of that displacement. Now that is, for example, theta being equal to 180 degrees. Now when theta, when this theta is equal to 180 degrees, your force is in here. I will rotate it. Uh, I will just annotate again. So you will see right now your theta is acute angle. What if your force is directed in this manner? So in reference to this particular horizontal line, your theta now is, so this is now your force, is already 180 degrees. What have you noticed? This force now is an opposite direction as your displacement. If that is the case, your work sign will be negative. Now remember that we always measure our angles in your trigonometry from the horizontal starting from the right going to the left or that's in shall I say clockwise manner. So as mentioned here, your force will be in opposite direction as the displacement when the original theta that you are seeing here in the illustration is increased to 180 degrees. Now work is zero, on the other hand, if the direction of F is perpendicular with respect to the direction of that displacement, where is that? So let me change my color, let's say not blue, let's say you can see probably yellow. Okay, where is this 90 degrees? So again, we start here and we move until we reach this part. Now your original force F is perpendicular. So this is now your F it happens to it. It's now perpendicular to the displacement because this is your displacement. If the force is perpendicular to the displacement, remember this, work is equal to zero. Or shall we say your theta is equal to 90 degrees. So your work is zero if direction and force are perpendicular to each other. Okay? Do you get it? Questions? Okay, none. So we will proceed then. If there are no questions, I will clear again so that we can move downward. So here are sample problems. I placed here two actually for the application of what we just discussed. A person pushes a box 15 meters along the ground, along the ground using a force of 100 newtons. How much work has been done on the box? 
So take note, the keyword that you are to take note in here is what? What do you think is the keyword that you will take note here? Importante, it's a word that tells you, ah, this is a very simple case of just a product of the force times the distance. What is that word that tells you that there is no need for you actually to write a cosine theta in the formula? If you write a cosine theta, the theta is zero degrees. What word is that in the problem that tells you it's just a simple case of force times distance? Because cosine of zero is equal to one. So it's just like this one. The thing that you're seeing here is just force times distance without this. What is that word in the problem? That tells you I don't need the value of the theta anymore. Or theta is zero degrees. What word is that in the problem? Somebody wrote in the chat box, along the ground, the word along. Very good, John and Casey. So, says along the ground, meaning there's on the same direction. If our ground is horizontal, if this is the ground, the displacement or the force that is applied is also along the ground. So, same as the orientation of the ground if that is the case it's just like you have the original formula for the work which is force times distance if you intend to use the standard formula which is the cosine theta cosine is zero or theta rather is zero degrees giving you a cosine of one so you just simply multiply the two so that would be 100 times 15 giving you 1500 newton meter or 1,500 joules, okay? Now, I will clear this, and then we proceed with the second sample problem. So this time, to give you another application, you need to find the work done by a 45 Newton force in pulling the suitcase, so this is the suitcase, in the figure at an angle of 50 degrees for a distance of 75 meters. So this lady here is pulling the suitcase but the suitcase is inclined at an angle of 50 degrees from the horizontal so how do we go about solving this problem of course you have to identify your given your theta as stated in the problem is 50 degrees and this displacement, so the suitcase is displaced through the application of this force by how much? by 75 meters. So in the given here below, you see distance is 75, force is 45 newtons, and theta is 50 degrees. Then, then you have to go back to the original generic formula for work that is force times displacement times cosine theta. Again, look at the direction of the force. This is the direction of the force. But what do you need? You need the horizontal component of the original force, and that is this f of x. And that f of x is your, if you're going to make a triangle, and this is your triangle, and that's your theta. This is your f of x. This is your f, the original f, and this is your f of y. Okay? So it's still cosine because you're after the horizontal component of this force. So our answer would be, of course, direct substitution to the formula. Now, any question? You can write your questions in the chat box if there's something not clear. Okay, so I will, I will uh, understand or take your silence as it's clear. Now we go to, we'll end with this mechanical energy, okay? Now, when we speak of mechanical energy class, it's the energy or the sum of an object's kinetic and potential energy. Now, in high school, we represent actually this kinetic energy as, as I can recall my high school or my physics then in high school, E sub K, and this my teacher would write this as E sub P. 
Our kinetic energy would simply be K and potential energy would be P. That's how I recall it then. I don't know how they represent it now, but when we take the sum of these two for a given material or object, that would be now what we call as the mechanical energy. Now, kinetic energy we know is the energy of motion. So the kinetic energy of the body is dependent on its mass and its speed. So take note, the word speed is used, not velocity, because actually we're not interested with the direction. We're only interested in the uh, magnitude of the movement of the body. So the mass and the speed of the object is needed for us to be able to know its energy in motion or that's its kinetic energy to calculate for it so you can see it here the formula this is fundamental it's one half the product of its mass and the square of its velocity so the kinetic energy of a body increases of course as it speeds up or as it uh, its speed increases so as an example here, a ball rolling at 10 meters per second is said to have greater kinetic energy than the one that is only moving at 5 meters per second. Why? It's because you could see this. The greater the value of this, since it's being multiplied to the mass, the greater the value of the kinetic energy. Now for a given speed, the kinetic energy increases with increasing mass. What does this mean? So let's say we fix the speed. So we keep this fixed. What happens to the kinetic energy and the mass? So it says here, kinetic energy increases with mass. So we increase the mass. We also increase the kinetic energy. If you recall the relationship class, of, shall we say, directly proportional to mass, and kinetic energy is directly proportional to speed or velocity in this case, in the way the formula is written. Directly proportional to means that if you're going to get rid of the proportionality symbol here and replace it with an equal sign, if this increases, this increases. If this increases, this also increases. And in terms of a formula, normally, if we replace the proportionality relationship with an equal sign, we introduce a constant. And what is that constant? That constant is the one half that you are seeing here. Okay. Now, this is the product. This is the product of your mass and the square of your velocity, which is the kinetic energy of the object. So, directly proportional to are the relationships between mass, velocity, and kinetic energy. Okay, any question for now, class? None? So there is an example stated here that a large truck traveling at 50 kilometers per hour has greater kinetic energy than a small car traveling at the same speed, speed because the track has greater mass. So commonly, kinetic energy is expressed in the unit joule, just like our what we have discussed on top, which is work. It is also having the unit, which is joule, just like any other forms of energy. As for potential energy, which is one of the energies we need to sum up with kinetic energy to get mechanical energy, it is known as energy due to position. Uh, the old definition then is energy at rest. So an object has potential energy by virtue of its position relative to other objects. And this position, uh, you have to understand that it has something to do with elevation. How? or what is its elevation relative to another object. So potential energy in essence is stored energy that arises from the attraction and repulsions an object experiences in relation to other objects. So forces of attraction or repulsions that an object is uh, experiencing in relation to another. So that is why we 
we have a formula for this potential energy here, which is having elevation, as I have mentioned already, or height. Now, let me just clear my drawing so I can go up, because I cannot scroll up without it being cleared. Okay. Uh, now we have this. Excuse me, class, ha. Now, we have here the formula for potential energy. It still considers the mass of the object, just like kinetic energy, but we now multiply it with the G, the gravitational constant, which is 9.8 meter per second squared. And the height or the, the elevation of the object relative to another or Yes, the height of the object. So this is commonly from based on uh, sea level or ground level. So we have here the height. Okay. Now, just like kinetic energy, its unit is in joule. So potential energy may be converted into kinetic energy and vice versa. So for example, think of a cyclist. So you have the cyclist here poised at the top of a hill. Initially, at this position it contains or it has potential energy. It's at rest. As a result, the bicycle easily moves down the hill with increasing speed. As it does so, a potential energy initially that is contained by the cyclist, cyclist is converted into kinetic energy. So converted into kinetic energy. The potential energy decreases as the bicycle goes down the hill because the elevation decreases as well. As, it gear, as the cyclist nears the bottom or the ground level, its displacement or its elevation relative to the ground decreases. So if elevation decreases, this height decreases, potential energy decreases. Just like the way I've written it in the kinetic energy equation, we can say that potential energy is directly proportional to mass and potential energy is directly proportional to the height or the, ele the uh, elevation of the object relative to another. Most often time class, this uh, basis is sea level. Okay, so this example illustrates the forms of energy are interconvertible. So we know since high school that energy can be transformed. So the term that is being used by our teachers, transformed from one form into another, or they can be converted from one form into another. So kinetic energy and potential energy are shown in just one illustration from potential to kinetic energy as this cyclist goes down the hill. The potential energy initially stored in the motionless bicycle, so it's not moving, and the rider at the top of the hill is converted to kinetic energy as the bicycle moves down the hill. And now in the process, loses or converts its potential energy to kinetic energy. So this is from the book by Lee May and Brown. So let's go to sample problems regarding potential energy. So a roller coaster of mass 2,000 kilograms is rolling down a track, oh my, with an instantaneous speed of 10 meters per second. I can't imagine a roller coaster rolling down a track. Okay, what is the kinetic energy of this roller coaster? So we simply need its mass and its speed. And it's a case of direct substitution to the formula. So in the process, we have an answer of 100,000 joules. If we need to convert this 100,000 joules to kilojoules, there's a need for us to divide by 1,000. So it's now equivalent to 100 kilo joule because one joule or 1000 joules rather is equal to one kilo joule kilo meaning 1000 the prefix kilo is 1000 now our second example here you're given a 16 kilogram box on a 5.6 meter ramp is pushed down from point a to point b 
what is the total amount of potential energy gained by the block. So your length, the length of the ramp is 5.6 meters. So it's not this one, but this one, the length of the ramp. I will annotate. So this is your ramp. And its length is 5.6 meters. This horizontal uh, distance from the tip of the ramp on rest at rest on the ground and its upper tip is 5.3. Now, what else is given? The mass of this block is 16 kilograms. Now, how do we get the age? Okay, so now is the time to apply trigonometry using this triangle. So you need to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the H. So H squared plus A squared is equal to L squared and the rest is your algebra. So your calculator will work it for you. So you can see now that you determine the height. You want this height. It's determined to be 1.81 meters. Knowing the height allows you to determine the potential energy of the block once it's already in here on top of the ramp because it has to be moved on top of the ramp. So it's 16 kilograms. Its mass is 16 kilograms multiplied to the G and the H that you solve here giving you a potential energy of 283.81 Joule. That's for the potential energy of this block. Now, number three, and I will end with this. We have the bowler here in this sample problem. Let me just clear the drawings. So a bowler lifts a 5.4 kilogram bowling bowl from the ground level to a height of 1.6 meters and then drops it after the bowl is dropped. So you can imagine ang mga nag-bowl na, gina-raise na anay nila ang pin pin or ang duck pin on a certain height, then lower their hand and shall say, throw that particular bowling pin or tin pin or duck pin on the bowling alley. So it has to be raised to a certain height because it, it gives the, the tin pin the momentum that it needs so that it can strike the pins at the end of the bowling alley. Now, uh, what is being stated here? After the ball is dropped, it gains kinetic energy. So the ball gains potential energy when it was raised to a certain height. And when it is dropped already, that kinetic energy is converted, or rather that potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. Now, if all the potential energy has been converted to kinetic energy by the time the ball strikes the ground, what is the ball speed? just before it hits the ground. So what is the speed of the ball just before it hits the ground? So this is a case of, since you have conversion of potential energy to kinetic energy, you need to equate the two equations or formulas. Let me just please uh, take this one. So PE is equal to KE. So when the ball is dropped, its potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. And we assume that the kinetic energy just before the ball hits the ground is equal to the potential energy. So just the same, we just equate the two equations. You have the mass, you have the G, and you have the height to which your ball was raised to. Now, and then you have, again, the formula here for kinetic energy, which is one half the mass times the velocity. So this is the velocity of the ball before it hits the ground when all 100% of its potential energy is uh, converted to kinetic energy. Okay, somebody is right, wrote something on the chat box. Miss Evelosity. It's okay. Thank you, Marion. Thank you. It's okay. Anyway, having raised that concern, I always practice that all my lectures are 
uh, recorded and uploaded in my channel. So I will be posting a link of this lecture in our lecture part of the module, in the lesson part. So you will see it in your canvas anyhow, just in case you'll get disconnected for some or there will be power interruptions. Okay, so it's 12.25 from my end. We still have kinetic energy, electromagnetic energy, and the rest here, which we will be discussing on Monday because we have, no, not Monday, but Tuesday. We have a long time to discuss this on Tuesday. So please read them in advance because some actually have been discussed or covered in your high school. But for now, we'll leave it until here, until potential energy kinetic energy and how the two are being interconverted. Okay, I will stop sharing now. Do you have any questions, class? Have any concern that you'd like to raise before we end? I have any question. I have any question. I have any question. I have any question. Sa may angle. Ang yung gamitan sa Pythagorean nito. Okay, wait ha. Mabalik ko po. Angle. Dramas dito na sa... Here? Dumay box. A box? Ay, dinamit sa... Oh. Here? Okay. Sa potential energy ito mo. Potential energy here? Ang, ang sa may 5.6 sublamis mo sa dalawang limo. Uh, gamit ka ba lang okay, sa... Okay, um, okay, okay. Na narami sa mm -hmm. number two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the question, pa Iho? Paano ka nakakuha sa L, ano, miss, L squared na miss sa Pentagorean? Ang 5.6. This is... Meters. Okay, let me just annotate. Ha? <clears throat> if you have this triangle, this is your ramp and this is your L. And this L is actually the ramp length, which is 5.6. This is your ramp. Mm, uh, okay. It's like the hypotenuse of your triangle. This is the ground, which is 5.3. So okay, your, okay na. So your height okay. is the unknown. Hypotenuse. Okay, so okay na. Okay na, Mr. Okay. Some more questions. I will not uh, make questions for the day. So again, discuss. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here. Any question here? Okay. So I'll stop sharing now. Any questions? Well, 16 lang din ka mo. So there are five students who are not present now. Any questions? None? Okay, so I'm sure some haven't yet eaten my lunch just like myself. So we have to eat our lunch now and stop recording.